طلاب العربية طالبات العربية أهلا وسهلا بكم مرة أخرى في الدرس الثالث والعشرون من المنحة ودرسنا اليوم هو أنواع الجملة يعني the types of sentences الجملة في العربية يمكن أن تكون فعلية اسمية وصلا أو صفة ظرفية شرطية أو حصرية يمكن أن تكون كل هذه الأنواع نبدأ بالجملة الفعلية فالفعلية تبدأ بفعل يعني the verbal sentence starts with a verb in Arabic ففهمت الزميلتان الدرس جيدا فبدأت الجملة بفهمت يعني فهم وهو فعل شاهدنا فيلما أمس it started with a verb شاهد now notice the difference between the two الزميلتان is an explicit subject here your subject is there in the second case the subject is implied in the conjugation of the verb شاهدنا يعني هن they feminine plural right so this we call uh, فاعل بارز وهذا نسميه فاعل مستتر يعني explicit is بارد بارز ومستتر is implicit ملاحظة an observation يتبع الفعل الفاعل البارز في الجنس لا في العدد يعني the verb agrees with an explicit subject in its gender but not in its number in this case so look at these two sentences يدرس الطلاب يعني male students العربية so if you look carefully يدرس is conjugated as if it is with هو and it does not agree in number however it agrees in gender look at the second example تدرس الطالبات العربية now we're talking about female students and then تدرسو is keeping the feminine as if it is conjugated with here but does not agree in number with it أما النوع الثاني من الجملة فهو الإسمية يعني a nominal sentence تبدأ باسم أو ضمير يعني it starts with a noun or with a pronoun look at the examples we have here هذا كتاب مهم this sentence is starting with a demonstrative pronoun هذا this for masculine singular this is an important book هما أختاني now this sentence starts with هما which is the pronoun they two feminine are sisters look at the sentence following that الناس لا يحبون هذه المدينة now الناس people لا يحبون هذه المدينة so it starts with the noun now notice that even though it has a verb it still is considered a nominal sentence جملة اسمية why? because الاسم came before the verb أما النوع الثالث فهو جملة الوصل والصفة both of these are relative clauses what's a relative clause? it's a clause that uses which, who, that generally to add information about what precedes it so الوصل in Arabic is used when the sentence has an explicit pronoun as you see in this example أعرف الطالبة التي تخرجت السنة الماضية I know the female student who so التي here is explicit and it's telling us about that because الطالبة which it refers to is definite أعرف الطالبة التي تخرجت who graduated last year now look at the sifa. I, we used actually the same example so that you see the difference between the two. أعرف طالبة تخرجت السنة الماضية. Now in this case, you have an indefinite طالبة which is the antecedent. Now your relative clause cannot have a pronoun that refers to it. 
And so it comes right here in this case as a verbal sentence. And it still, it says, I know a student who graduated last year. أما النوع الرابع فهو الظرفية And this is an adverbial sentence Generally adverbial sentences have to do with time or place And sometimes they also do with manner Manner says how the act took place And we consider them as compliments They generally are not an essential part of the grammar of the sentence So look at the example we have هاجر عمي إلى فرنسا عندما التحق بجامعة السوربون جملة فعلية الأساسي في الجملة هو هاجر عمي That's the important part Where did he go to France? عندما When? عندما التحق بجامعة السوربون When he joined or enrolled at the University of La Sorbonne Now notice that this part here is telling us when he did this and it's a dharf. It is talking actually about an adverb of time. أَمَّا النَّوْعُ الْخَامِسُ مِنَ الْجُمْلَةِ فَهُوَ الْجُمْلَةُ الشَّرْطِيَةُ يعني the conditional sentence. And generally a conditional sentence is divided into two parts. The if clause and the then clause. يعني جملة الشرطي وجملة جواب الشرطي. Look at the example we have here and we divided it into two parts so that you see and it is from Surah Al-Sharh, the verse of Al-Sharh, Al-Ayah Al-Sabi'ah wa Al-Ayah Al-Thamina, verses 7 and 8. إِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَ يعني when you're done with work and you have time, then pray, right? And, you know, make an effort to praise your God. جيد؟ فالجملة الشرطية تنقسم إلى هذين الجزئين. آخر نوع من الجمل وهو السادس هي الجملة الحصرية. في الحقيقة هذه الجملة أسلوبية وتعتمد على المعنى. It's essential here to notice that this sentence is made of more than one part, but no part in it can be independent. The meaning will not be complete without having both parts or more. تحتوي على أكثر من جزء لا يكتمل المعنى بواحد منها يعني أما صديقي محمود We cannot stop at محمود Because we will not understand what the rest of the sentence is saying As for my friend محمود The listener is expecting more information This is why it's called a restricted sentence It's a جملة حصرية فلم يحضر الاجتماع as for my friend Mahmoud, he did not attend the meeting. Shukran lakum, ya tullabi marratan ukhra, ala mutabaatina, wa ila liqa fitar silqa.